You know, no one wants to start a brand new series with a mea culpa. But I have a confession to make, and it's something that I never thought I'd say. What am I talking about? Stay tuned. We're going to get into it. Okay, with an intro like that, you're like, Jesus, Jeremy, what are you talking about? When I first got started with Ecamm, I kept hearing, all you need is your iPhone, and you can stream on Ecamm, and it looks great. And to that, I said, And so I was like, it can't possibly be true. And then everybody's like, yeah, yeah, there's this great product called Camo. So I downloaded it recently when I, I needed something that would allow me to, I was looking at the camera on the computer. I couldn't be looking off the screen like this. I had to be looking down at the screen. So obviously this wasn't going to work with this camera. You got this. You've already paid or are paying for this, you know, three cameras, a fourth if you include the front camera. So why would you buy another camera, especially if you're just getting started with Ecamm? Uh, and I tried web cameras. Let's put it this way. The webcams that are out there, there are a few that do 4K, but they do them not that great. I would strongly advise starting with your iPhone's camera first, then getting a dedicated web camera, if that's all you can afford right now. <clears throat> and being on an older Intel-based MacBook Pro, the HD camera, the FaceTime camera that's built into it, is horrible. It's only five years old, but it's horrible. I mean, you'll see in a second, it does not look good. I gave Cam another shot and thankfully the results were stunning. So let me take you through my settings and you can decide for yourself whether or not it's something that's right for you. All right, so let's go over to my laptop screen here. Okay, so I'm on the Camo website. Reincubate is the name of the company. And so it's reincubate.com forward slash Camo. I'll also provide a link at the bottom I get a little commission if you buy through the link. So consider that not a requirement. I'm just putting it there for your convenience. So if you want to, you can download it that way. If you go to Camo's website, this is what you see and you just download it. Now there's two apps. There's the app that runs on your Mac and then there's the app that runs on the phone. You take your, in, in my case, I still have a lightning based phone. I'm going to take my iPhone and plug it in to the lightning adapter. Okay, so my camera's mounted on a Belkin uh, MagSafe mount that I got a long time ago when MagSafe first came out. And inside of Camo, once it's installed, that's the Camo icon, right? Click that, sh say Show Camo Studio. Okay, so this is, is my FaceTime HD camera. So it's not a big fan of the lighting in here. <laughs> what can I say? It looks like hell. So in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, you can see there is a device. And as long as you've plugged in your iPhone, whether it's USB-C to USB-C or Lightning to USB-C, I'm gonna select here, I'm gonna select my 14 that I have, and then wham, look at this, way better. Way, way better. Now this is more or less out the box. Now I did make some changes already and I'll show you what I did to get this look. But I mean, for something that is, right now I'm running it at 1080p and I can see that right here. See, 1080p. And then, you know, there's other settings in here. I'm not gonna play with any of the other stuff in here. I am gonna focus on the right hand side because I believe that this is where you need to focus your efforts setting up the camera. What we want to do is we want to get the camera feed exactly where we want it to be so that as many times as you use it in Ecamm, it produces a baseline image that you find 100% acceptable. And if you want to use the camera effects panel to make slight adjustments inside Ecamm, you do it in Ecamm. This is more of like a global setting. So some things I would do, first of all, you can see here under background, I can select portrait mode. And if I do that, notice, watch what happens back behind me. See, it just gets a little bit blurry. See that? Now you could go full on zoom style like this, which I think looks terrible. And you can see around the front of the mic how that's not great. But if you take this back, if you dial it back so it's not so strong, just enough. See that blurriness gives you that bokeh effect that 
Camo does an excellent job of setting it up so that you can get the best quality image using this, this portrait mode without it getting too kind of wonky. One of the things I did want to point, well, we'll get to zoom on the left-hand side when we do a couple other things. Okay, so image adjustments is what I want to look at next. And so I'm going to turn off or just collapse enhancements, and now I'm at image adjustments. So exposure. So you can see here, first of all, I've got my shutter speed. Now, if I set this checkbox, this basically means it's on manual mode right now. If I were to do that, turn it off, now it's in auto mode and you can see, now it's saying, well, 1 40th of a second, but I like to follow the rule. Just double the frame rate that you're running at. If you're capturing at 24 frames a second, put in 1 48th of, for your shutter speed. Essentially, you're dub doubling your frame rate. So we're gonna put this back on and it remembers the last setting that it was, was set to and it'll hold it there for now because you've turned off auto. So why would you not leave auto on? Well, because as, especially if you're in a situation where if you're dealing with natural light from outside and clouds are going over or the sun is so bright out there out, outside that it's causing the, uh, the image exposure to adjust while you're talking, I would fix it. You might have certain things get blown out over time, but the overall image exposure will be constant throughout the entire presentation. So I'm gonna leave that checked on and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna set this. You can just click in the field here like this, and then I'm just gonna type one slash 60. And so now you can see that's back to 160. We're gonna use this little trick to our advantage. So let's uh, let's go ahead and look at, oh, ISO. ISO is another one. So right now I've got it set to 125. Now, how do I know that 125 is ideal? Well, normally what you're trying to do is push down your ISO as low as you can go because ISO kind of acts like gain on your image sensor, meaning the higher the ISO, the image will get brighter, but at the expense of noise to your image, which results in like little creepy crawlies all over the place. You see this all the time in low light photography or videography, and you're trying to avoid that. A well lit room is what you want. So you wanna get that ISO down as low as possible and use as much lighting as you need to get you the exposure that you want. Set your, you could set the exposure back to auto and it'll automatically adjust these settings. So you can find an, you can find an ISO that the camera thinks is okay and then turn this back to manual and, and then play around with it but I like to keep it, you know, somewhere between 100 and 200. That's just personal preference. If you have a, a very bright room, you're gonna have to drive that ISO down pretty well. Yeah, that's that's how, how I would go about doing it. All right, so then the next one is white balance, and this is a biggie. White balance is something that the camera app on the iPhone does automatically. Not necessarily well, but it does it automatically. If I set my image, right now it's on auto white balance. So it's figuring out the best white balance. And the white balance is the, the difference in what the camera's seeing and, and what is truly white in your image. So sometimes that'll be off. A lot of it depends on the lighting, but a lot of it also depends on the sensor that is on the camera. Sometimes the sensor will tint the image just one way or another. So you first thing you probably want to do is just set it to uh, auto. So here I can see it's setting it to 4318. And normally you don't run at these kinds of weird numbers. It's usually round numbers. And then the tint is telling me minus six. Okay, that's what it's saying. This is based on the average of what is inside this overall image. And what you're trying to do is get what pure white would look like. So I can see back off over here, uh, you know, towards the, the side here, I've got some white back there, but there are other ways to do this. One way is just to use the, a sheet of paper that works, a white sheet of paper. 
anything white. You can hold this up in the screen, or you can hold it up inside of, uh, you know, the, the majority of the image like this. Okay, so it's saying 4,100. Now with a tint of minus 10. Now if I come back here, see now it's reading 4,200 here. And then it's a minus nine on the tint. That, that's a white piece of paper. Now what happens if I bring the gray card in? Like this. See, now it's reading back to 4,300. Now why is it doing that? Well, part of it is because we're still here, right? So what I'm gonna do over on the left-hand side, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down and I'm going to zoom in. And now I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna completely disappear for a second. And I'm just gonna look and I can see that, there we go. You can use this, this portion of the zoom feature to zoom in on a specific area and then just go like that. Now you wanna have this as close to where you're sitting as possible. So for instance, you know, if you don't wanna hold it up to the camera like this. The reason is because your light sources around you are hitting you and they're changing their intensity as they get further and further away from the source. So you wanna try and hold it up you know, as close to your face as possible where the light is hitting, and then zoom in on that area like that. And now, let's see what it's reading. 4250. So, you know, you can, you can play around with this a little bit, but you gotta make sure you're sitting you know, you're, you're basically, this is the only part that I don't like. I don't like these wrinkles. Okay. So 4229. See, see what that little difference did, you know, just removing those wrinkles, a flat card gave me something that's a little bit more accurate. And now it's saying, uh, minus four on my tint. So I'm going to turn this to auto minus four, minus five. I'm going to turn this to auto. Let me zoom out. So now I've fixed my white balance at 4,200. And I, you know, the white balance is now set to four. Now it's four in the green direction. How do I know it's four in the green direction? Because that's the direction, or it's minus four in this case. So if I plug in minus four, that'll get me the look that I want. So again, going back to doing the white balance, the way that you do it is you either use a white sheet of paper, put it up next to your face, zoom in, get that white reading with this set to auto. So this, you would think that auto would mean on, but it's actually when you, you'll see it when you switch it off, um, it'll say auto. And that means it's automatically adjusting. So now, I've got my two levels in here. Flash level, you don't need to worry about. Brightness, hue, saturation, vibrance. You don't really have to play with any of this stuff. If you are finding that you're trying to compare the output of what's coming out of this image versus what's coming out of this image, well, I mean, it's clear that that's, there, there is a difference. And so how do I adjust that? You can see now the difference between the two. So it's closer. Is it identical? No, but you know, this I'm just doing if I want to color match my cameras, if I have multiple cameras. If you're just trying to get one camera to work, you don't need to worry about this stuff. Just get the look that you're looking for. You know, if you, if you like this look, then roll with it. You're set up here. You don't need to play around. You really don't need to play around with anything else. There's a lot of other stuff inside of Camo Studio. Again, I'm focusing on how you would use this inside of Ecamm. All right. Speaking of Ecamm, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to minimize Camo Studio and then go into Ecamm. And I have a blank scene here and I'm going to add a camera. 
And of course, it wants to add my FaceTime HD camera, which is gross. Now, all you have to do is you set your camera source from FaceTime HD to camo camera, and boom. This is your camera inside of Ecamm. Now there will be a slight delay here because it's going from your iPhone to Camo Studio to, to Ecamm. And then if you're capturing somewhere else, even it, there could be even a further delay. But now it's working in Ecamm. So it is, it is like any other camera in Ecamm. It can have all the same effects. You can do all the fun stuff. You know, you can, you know, put your, you can, do this, set your fill type from color to you know, blur. I want to blur my image, pixelate or anything like that. If I'm trying to do the witness protection program look, you know, I can do all that stuff. So all the effects that you have, this is just a way to get the camera in. So lighting is key. The camera's position is definitely key. And you want to make sure that whatever you end up selecting inside Camo Studio gives you the look that you want inside of Ecamm. Because now you can go into Ecamm, like I was saying, you can go into your camera settings and make adjustments here. So that's it. That is lunchtime lessons with yours truly. And, you know, I'm I'm really excited about this because I, I, I like Camo and, and I've been pleasantly surprised with the way that the, it's been able to work out for the lessons that I've been doing. And I think if you're getting into Ecamm, this is going to help you get going that much more quickly. If you already have an iPhone, whether it's really anything from a 12 onward will give you the look that you want. Basically anything with the three lenses will give you anything you want in terms of image quality. Uh, but just keep in mind that the iPhone only has so much onboard processing power. So it's taking the image from the iPhone, feeding it into Camo Studio, which is then sending it off to Ecamm. So um, the more that you offload onto the camera and to the iPhone, you're going to, well, first of all, you'll be able, if you're hungry, you fry an egg on the iPhone at this point. It's it runs pretty hot. So make sure you're in a in a cool enough environment because the iPhone will overheat. And you'll know pretty quickly because the image will just go blurry. And that means that the iPhone is shut down temporarily until it cools off. Now, of course, there's plenty more to do. There's plenty more to adjust. And we'll have a full class on using camo on our main website, basecamp.pro. But until then, feel free to play around. I mean, that's what this is all about, just kind of tweaking settings and getting the look that you want. But Camo and Camo Studio is really the best option if you're looking to just bring in your iPhone feed right into Ecamm. There's really nothing easier. We're gonna go ahead and wrap it. Thank you so much for joining me on our very first lunchtime lessons. This has been quite the experience and I'm looking forward to doing a whole lot more in the meantime, you can visit us back here on our webpage. Please be sure to like and subscribe. We really appreciate the support. And you can also visit our main website at basecamp.pro. For giggles, we're also on Instagram and on Facebook. So wherever you find us, we'll be there and we'll be updating content all the time. Until next time, take care of yourself and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.